right, we're here. Welcome back to Naked Runners TV. We're here with uh, Harvard professor uh, Daniel Lieberman. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. My pleasure. We've just been, actually come back from a, a barefoot run around Brisbane, so uh, it's been very nice to experience the, the barefoot running of Brisbane. I wanted to ask you, Daniel, what's it been like? How have you found the barefoot running so far while you've been in Australia? Well, pretty much only run barefoot in Brisbane, uh -huh. and uh, the path along the river here is terrific. It's yep. smooth and beautiful and there's only a few little knobbly bits and I guess the floods cleaned the whole place up so uh -huh. it looks great. Yeah good. Um, I wanted to ask you, there's a few things to look out for when you're running barefoot and I wanted to ask you, have you trodden in some bindi eyes yet? Oh is that the little thorn? Uh -huh. Yeah I got one of those. Yeah, yeah good, yeah. so you've tasted Australian culture, you've yeah, yeah. trodden a bindi, very what's, good. What's it called, a bindi, bindi eye? Bindi eye. Okay, you yeah, have to look I it up. What bit me. Yeah you yeah. have to look it up. Um, I wanted to ask you, what's the funniest or strangest thing someone's ever said to you when they've seen you running barefoot? Uh, there's this lady in Cambridge, Massachusetts, who occasionally sees me running barefoot, yep. and uh, for some reason, both times I've been running with some friends who are women, uh -huh. and she shouts in this like Boston accent, "There goes Charlie and his <laughs> angels!" <laughs> Classic. There you go. That's my uh, that's my favorite shout out. Very good. Now, Usually people just say asshole or something <laughs> like that. That's right. Lost your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, important question: Vibram or Vibram? I think the company pronounced it Vibram, but uh -huh. most people say Vibram. Yeah, right? i got to say, I, I often do say Vibram, but I'm coming around to saying Vibram. All right. All right, good. Well, um, who cares, right? No, it's exactly. It's just a shoe. Exactly, exactly. If you buy it, you have the right to say what you want. Call it whatever you like, that's right. Um, now, in Australia, now, a lot of your material talks about persistence hunting, and, and it's interesting to relate that to an Australian setting. Uh -huh. I wanted to ask you, is persistence hunting, is it something that's been done to chase animals such as a kangaroo? It has, mm -hmm. actually. So there's a, there are actually ethnographic accounts of... Um, of Aborigines uh, chasing kangaroos. Yes. Um, there's, one, there's one monograph I found uh, yep. on that. And then I know that there's some data on uh, people in somewhere in the Northern Territory, I'm not sure where, mm -hmm. where actually women do some persistence yeah, okay. uh, chasing too. So yeah. yes, it certainly was used in Australia. But remember, people colonized Australia mm. really late in human evolution, yeah, we're, we're, uh, after some very serious technology had been invented. Yeah. Remember, uh, the bow and arrow was invented 100,000 years ago. Uh, stone points were invented 300,000 years ago. So for millions of years, there was no projectile technology at all. Yeah. So, so even the last 100,000 years, as far as I'm concerned, is kind of recent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're quite, you're right. We're quite a, a young country, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, a friend of mine, I was telling him a bit of a story about persistence hunting and, and some of your work. He recounted a story of being on a farm and there was a stray sheep on the farm. And he told a story of when they were little kids of chasing this sheep around. And it was all the same things such as chasing this thing down in the heat of the day and it grew a lot of wool so it got tired and it took him, I think, several months to get the hang of it. Uh -huh. um, and I've, I've put a little story up on, on YouTube about it, but... Um, it's persistent there's, hunting too. There you go. That's a couple <laughs> of birds at it here. But, uh, and they ended up getting this sheep using the same sort of strategy. Uh, so right. I, said, I said to him, look, you're a modern day uh, version of this persistence hunter. So Yeah, my it, wife and I once wrote, uh, persistence, well, ran down a, a jackrabbit. Uh, uh huh, very it was, good. It was a laboratory rabbit that we needed to catch. <laughs> I was going to ask you, so you've, yeah, is it something that you've taken part in seriously yourself? I, I, I gather there's people around the world that are conducting no, I mean, I've never hunts. done a persistence hunt uh -huh. other than I run down this jackrabbit yeah. that got loose uh -huh. at a field station where we were working. <laughs> but, um, Yep. I'd love to try one. Uh -huh. I've been invited. I was invited last year. Yep. There, there were some folks who were going to run down a pronghorned antelope. Uh -huh. um, but the thing is, you know, you need... The thing about persistence hunting is it's not just about how good you are as a runner. Yep. It's also about how good you are as a tracker Tracking. and a yep. naturalist. And I'd be hopeless. <laughs> I mean, you know, because the animal's going to run away from you, and then you can't see it. You yep. have to figure out where it went. Yep. You have to figure out, you know, from its footprints, from, from clues, from spore. You have to basically learn to think like the animal. Yep. I'd be hopeless at that. Yep. Yeah, so... Not for oh, me yet. Yeah, okay. Um, and at the APA, we're actually in Brisbane at the moment. We we're attending the APA, the physio conference, and, and Professor Liebman spoke at it yesterday. And um, Daniel, you spoke a little bit, bit about running with iPods. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess for me, I, and we, we have an organisation called the Naked Runners, and we're very much against running with iPods. Um, can you comment a bit more about why you think it's best to not to leave the iPod at home? Well, I think from a very basic health reason, mm -hmm. the key thing about not wearing an iPod is that you can hear your feet. Yep. And I think, you know, whether you like to groove to your music or not, or listen to the radio or whatever, that's one issue. The sort of philosophy of running is one issue. But just the skill of learning to run, yep. hearing your feet hit the ground tells you a lot about mm -hmm. how you're, how you're, about your body and about, yep. uh, about your strike and how you're hitting, you know, your forces that are acting on the ground. Because that, the sound of your foot hitting the ground tells you about the forces that are between you and the ground. Yep. So, not wearing an iPod 
I think is a really useful training tool yep. to help people run. To run well, you need to run quietly. Uh -huh. So I think once you put on an iPod, um, you you lose that skill. Yeah, and 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 that's totally. I guess the approach that we're talking about is just getting in tune with your body and with the world around you and the surfaces and the whole thing. Yeah. And I guess an iPod probably blocks that. Uh, it's kind of like oh, I've had. Yeah. Well, there is, well, there is one other point though about yeah. the iPod, which is that also when you listen to music. Yeah. Um, most music is not at, at, a, at a good cadence, so uh -huh. you, you end up changing your cadence, your stride frequency, yeah. and usually to a suboptimal one. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can buy these iTunes yeah. sort of downloads, <laughs> but, you know, music that's all like 180 beat, uh -huh. but um, you know, it's just... I think there's some Metallica yeah. out there that does yeah. a bit of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. so those people are into it, <laughs> but um, if you want to beat yourself up and, and go crazy. Um, I've, 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 the, one of the best things I've heard, it's sort of a bit like driving in your car with the, with the favourite song on and it's on full ball and you can't hear that you're in the wrong gear. So not having that, that perception of being in yeah. touch with your body I think is important. Yeah. So finally, I just wanted to wrap up, do you run naked? Are you a naked runner? <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's been a while since I've actually... <laughs> uh, you mean like streaking? We, um, streaking? we actually, so the naked runners, the first law of naked running is keeping your clothes on. So it's more about a figurative sense of running naked. So leaving things like the watch at home. And, oh, absolutely. And the yeah. iPod and, and that. So, yep, run naked. I, I, I would say I do that all the time. Yeah, all the time? I, I mean, often I head out of the house and the only thing I've got on are my shirts and my shirt. Yep. That's it. Fantastic. No watch, no iPod. There you are. Because that way you... Um, you um, I, when I do that, I often have some of my best runs. Yep. Fantastic, and I, we totally agree with you. Um, final question, would you be happy to be a naked running ambassador in the States for us? And I'd like to present you with a shirt. <laughs> That's cool. Would you be happy with that? Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you very much for spending time with us. There is your new shirt. Cool. Naked you know, runners. You know, we did this thing uh, uh, called the Naked um, the naked Runner Cabaret. You know uh -huh. what it is? I, we, we did this Chris McDougall. Uh -huh, I heard a bit about that, yeah. yeah. And um, so I actually gave a lecture about the biomechanics of running naked. Yep. Fantastic. I should have given it yesterday. Uh, that's all right. We'll have to. We'll come out to Boston, and you can. We can have the uh, the version of it out there. Good. Wonderful. Thanks again. Sure. You've been Great spending shirt. time with Professor Daniel Lieberman here in Brisbane, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.